Leading the way on air, online, and on the go. From WLWT, this is Issues. Hello, welcome to Issues. We have a lot going on today. I'm Jan Michelle, Lemon Kearney of Sesh Communications and the Cincinnati Herald. A little later, we're going to talk to poet, well, she's more than a poet. She's performing artist and artist, Annie Ruth, and she's headed for Kenya, and you can help, so we're going to talk about that. Also, India Jones is here, and she is going to uh, share her personal trainer with you and maybe some of her personal training secrets. Uh, first, we're going to talk about Art Beyond Boundaries, the gallery, which is fantastic. It's down there at 1410 Main Street, and we have with us the director, Jimmy Bolden. You know him. He's ex photographer extraordinaire and assistant director of the gallery, Karina Sabata. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Tell us about the gallery, Art Beyond Boundaries. Well, Art Beyond Boundaries, in a nutshell, what we are and what we uh, try to do is to provide a professional mainstream exhibition venue for artists with disabilities. And that's pretty much our mission in a nutshell. Um, we've been in this particular location for, uh, it'll be seven years in uh, wow. this, yes, yes. Has it been that long? Yes, it has been. Oh my, I remember when um, the Center for Independent Living Options, the host organization, was talking about this art gallery. Tell us how that whole concept came about. Well, actually, it was, it was, um, it was intended to be a temporary show. Um, we, well, we, we seven be years later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we began on Seventh on Street, as a matter of fact, in the old Joe's photo uh, space, and um, it, we we were going to to open for what was what used to be the Fine Arts Sampler Weekend. Okay. And Sponsored by Arts Wave. It, well, it used to be the Fine Arts Fund, which is now Arts Wave. Arts Wave, right, yes. yeah. And um, that was what we called this particular show that we have at this time of each year, our Fine Arts Sampler Weekend show, ah. until they changed the name to Arts Wave. And uh, that one show turned into another show, turned into, and the rest is history. And so seven years later, you're still here. Well, now it's actually eight years eight now, because it was yeah. December of 05 that we began. Wow, yes. okay. Yes. Wonderful. Well, now there's a, a, a new show that's opening up, and, it's open, and the opening reception, I understand, is, is January 31st. And it's called Seven of Arts. We're going to have some photos. Some of these photos, I think, are of pieces that are in it or actually in the show, and some might be others. Those will come up in a minute. But tell us about this Seven of Arts. Oh, well, here's a photo. Go ahead and talk about that. Then we'll get back to the show. Well, this is a, an additive sculptural piece uh, by the late Kwame Clay. Um, Kwame was... A local artist who uh, who who had national credentials. Um, That's and, beautiful. And uh, his pieces are, are are in museums and private collections all over all over the country. Okay. Oh, this is gorgeous. Tell also, us another one. Kwame Clay uh, piece. Um, again, it's it's it would be described as multimedia additive sculpture. Mm -hmm. For which you know he was uh, he was he was known for. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Oh, Tom I like Shaw. That. Oh yeah. Tom Shaw. Tom Shaw's um, art is really emotional. Very. Um, this is probably one of uh, uh, one of my favorites. Kind of looks like the scream. And yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. A different that version was the of name that, of yeah. it. Make me want to scream and holler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So Seven of Arts. Um, Karina, I was asking you about that. Tell us about Seven of Arts. Where does that name come right. from? Right. Well, uh, every year we have a anniversary exhibition. Last year was Six in the City. There's always a play of words um, on the number that we're celebrating. So right now it's Seven of Arts. Okay. Um, 
where the the image of the announcement is this sort of um like those casino slot machines yeah okay yeah so it's it's kind of playing off of the the presence of the casino now in OTR okay and um celebrating the idea of luck because you know there's always luck have something to do with success right. and um just celebrating seven years in that specific location in Main Street, our presence in Over the Rhine. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, and so now the opening reception, tell us about that. Well, it's going to be on January 31st, 6 to 9. Um, there's going to be wine, hors d'oeuvres. Um, there are always a lot of fun. Yeah, we're located at 1410 Main Street, and you'll have a chance to meet some of the artists. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, oh, and Jeff said, give us that phone number, please. Yeah, it's 513-421-8726. Um, we also have a website. It's just artbeyondboundaries.com. Okay, and give us a number again. 513-421-8726. Okay, and now is, is there any charge for this opening reception? No, it's free. It's free, so yeah. people can come on down and have some wine, meet the artists. Yes. Um, they can even buy some of the artwork, can't they? It's, yes. Yeah, the always. artwork is always for sale, mm -hmm. so that's wonderful. Um, and I should say your website which you mentioned, thank you for doing that, we'll connect you through WLWT.com. So mm -hmm. people can go into WLWT.com and connect to Art Beyond Boundaries. Mm -hmm. But just a wonderful place. So this is the seventh year in this location yes. at 1410 Main Street. Exactly. So we're mm -hmm. inviting people down. Now how long will, will Seven of Arts, uh, will, will the show actually go on? Do, is, is there an ending date for it? Yeah, it's about, each exhibition lasts about six to eight weeks. Okay. And this exhibit will end on March 14th. So okay. it'll be January 31st to March 14th. Okay, so we invite people to come on down January 31st mm -hmm. for that opening reception. And it's also Final Friday. Oh yeah, so yeah. It, so just a great time to be had yeah. by all. We don't want to miss that. Yeah. So stop in, and then people have until until March to actually see it. Yes. So okay, and then and then we'll look forward to the next exhibit. So this mm -hmm. is great. So we're going to come down and see Seven of Arts. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Karina. Excellent. Looking you have to come back to soon. Seeing you. Stick with us. We'll be back in a moment with Annie Ruth. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> I'm sitting here, Annie Ruth was giving me notes. <laughs> so uh, let, let, let me welcome Annie Ruth, I of the Artist Foundation. Uh, good and, to be here. Good to be here yes. too, good to see you. And um, you are about to do this fantastic trip and I'm looking, that's why I was looking at the notes, this yes. great trip to Kenya that I just heard about and I'm like, you've got to come on and talk about this. And I'm glad you had me too, I, I'm excited. Leaving for Kenya January 15th yes. through February 5th. So three weeks I'll be there. Wow. Doing what I love to do teaching art to children in the orphanages and schools, and I'll also be training teachers. So remember all those great curriculum packets yes, that I do? Yes, yes, yes. Taking all of those over to train the teachers and just, and, and actually using, this is unique. Last time I went with the uh, Cincinnati Museum Center. This time I'm going with a, a mission, so I'm connecting my art to my faith as well. That's beautiful, yeah. and, and that's what I was asking about because it's Helping Hands for the Nation Incorporated. Yes. Tell us about that Yes, group. Helping Hand for, Hands for the Nation Incorporated actually was started by a visionary pastor, uh, Darmel Davis, we call her Pastor D, okay. uh, pastor who D. actually okay. used to run the uh, Vision of Hope Center. Okay. And so she does a lot of international travel, uh, training leaders to connect their faith and, and seeing the oneness in all of us. 
That is beautiful. Yeah. Now, one thing you're taking, um, you're taking art supplies too. I am, because you know, uh, things we take for granted. You, I've been blowing up Facebook with, I need crayons, I need pencils, and uh, things we take for granted, like a single pencil in the classroom. You mm -hmm. won't find children playing pencil break over there with their pencils in the school, because it's a rare commodity. I, I say often that pencils are like gold. Oh, uh, and yeah. crayons are just, you know, to me, art's that universal language that transcends culture, faith, and, and right. so many other barriers that keep us away from each other. Right. But here's an opportunity to really, um, I think, let the kids do more critical thinking by creating art. Right. Uh, and then for me, connecting our faith, something as simple as a butterfly and what it represents in terms of, of rebirth. So those kind of lessons I'll be, you know, really integrating arts um, at, at all levels. That's fantastic. Now, now, should people donate art supplies? Or, or monetary gifts? Well, at this point, I think the best, the, the best thing right now, because we've got most of the art supplies because we're actually carrying them in our second luggage, people okay. can actually donate um, monetary funds by going to um, Eye of the Artist website, okay. which is um, www.eyeoftheartist.org. And, and their contributions and decide, are tax deductible, too. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. And I was going to say, our listeners know you can go to WLWT.com. We're going to connect them to eyeoftheartist.org. Oh, great. And, uh, and they, can, they can contribute there for the trip. Yes, they can. So now, how, how do you prepare for you know for something like this? I mean, what do you you know what do you what do you do? I have been preparing you know both mentally and physically. Um, of course, drinking a lot more water than you could, we're supposed to drink water anyway. But I'm drinking a lot more water because we're going through the, the through the very hot season. Okay. Uh, it's the opposite of our season, right? Oh, yeah. when it's winter here, it's, it's hot there. I'm going to come back with a suntan. So okay, you, I, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and, you know, exercising more, changing even my diet to more, more, more fiber, more vegetables, um, uh, and just, just staying on top Sounds of... Sounds healthier altogether. Well, you know yeah. what? I, I think I'm going to come back a renewed woman all over. Yeah. Um, I get so much inspiration from the young people. I, I say as much as I'm giving to them, I'm gleaning from them as well. Yeah, it's so got I'll, to be a, a just a fantastic, inspiring trip. It is, and I was all up to date on my shots and stuff oh, from, well, from the last uh, trip with the museum center, so I didn't have to get too many shots, just one. Uh, but I'm I'm in and tip so, top shape. And so now, are you going to do? So you're doing visual. I mean, you're doing you know the visual art. I'm doing are you all doing of spoken it. word. I, I am. I'm doing okay. all of the what's the word read material. Oh, wow. And so can, can you imagine? You know, remember one song, Jambo Watoto, which oh, yes, means because, hello, children. Because my children played it all the time. <laughs> Annie Ruth. So I hear Jumbo one more. <laughs> it, 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 it's wonderful and they, they loved it. So yeah. doing Jumbo Watoto is really going back to the source because Kiswahili is the language of, of Eastern Africa. Right. So I'll probably oh, learn right. some yeah. new some new words. I'll probably right. come back with some new songs too. So now are, are you going to teach the children there how to do spoken word poetry? And we are. We're going to do the call and response and, and you know when I go to the classroom we're always using the, the body language and, right. the, and we carry the instruments on our bodies from the finger snaps and the yes. claps. And so yeah I, you know they said they're going to work me so but it's not like work to me I, I will oh, I probably know. come back with some new songs and some new dance moves too right all right that's really <laughs> good now hopefully you're going to videotape some of this so we can I, see it I actually talked with Jimmy um, Bowden about getting some tips on you know th the kind of best um, photographs that I can capture okay. to really document my journey good. I'll be posting on Facebook and the blog so so everyone can actually enjoy the journey with me oh good um, and so you have to come back and maybe we can share some of that here and share it on the Herald website yeah. and all over the place place. That'll oh, yeah. be great. So I think that's just so fantastic. Yeah. So now Helping Hands for the Nation, is this their first trip or is this? This is not their first trip. They've gone to Israel and um, to parts of Africa and Jamaica and different, they, they, they go all over. And is it always taking artists? Because you said you're, you're the I artist I, member of the I team. I am the first time that they've actually taken an artist. Okay. And, and I, I love that and hopefully it will encourage other ministries as well that by using whether it's a visual artist, poet, or even in vocal artist, uh, it's a way to really kind of make your faith real. Okay. Put it into action. You know. So now the other members of the team are, are, are doing what? The you're, other members, you're, you're the artist member. Yes, I'm so. the artist member. I'm the artist slash teaching member. Okay. So the other minis uh, members of the team are, are, are ministers. So they'll oh, be okay. uh, in revival services. Uh, I think I'm really the only one that's coordinating all the school, the school visits. So wow. I'll have someone that'll be working with me. Uh, 
with all that great energy, right? That, I know that is so <laughs> great. I'm just thinking the teachers must be so excited too, because here's you know this person from Cincinnati, you know from the U.S. coming over and teaching uh, new ways of, of doing things, and yes. and you'll be bringing back new ways of doing things. I will. So. You know, I, I think um, what I'll be bringing back most of is just that hands-on, interactive. Um, part of uh, participating with the culture, right? And I'll probably probably taste some new foods. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, you'll have a ball. This is I, great. I, my husband will probably love it. I'll be making up some new cuisine oh, in the kitchen, right? Oh, fantastic! <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to have to come back and tell us. We want you to have a wonderful trip. Thank you. And our prayers are with you. I love the way you, uh, Annie Ruth, encourage you to encourages you to put a picture of her on the, on your fridge so you can yes. prepare every day. Yes. And again, connect to WLWT.com. We'll connect you to Iva Artist Foundation. Thanks, Annie Ruth. Thank you, you so much. Trip. Mm -hmm. Stick with us. We'll be back in a moment with India Jones and some workout tips. Welcome back, my name is India Jones. So as Jan mentioned earlier, I have a few fitness secrets if you wanna call it. So my first one, a good panty girdle. My second one, Kurt Billups, who is not only a fitness trainer, he is a certified fitness trainer, a certified specialist, also he is a CEO of Yep Fitness, a personal friend of mine, as well as a personal trainer of mine. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you, India. Thank you. So I want to know, as of right now, what got you into becoming this fitness guru that you are today? <laughs> I don't know if I consider myself a fitness guru, uh, but it started for me at a young age. My, uh, I had uncles and uh, my father was a, a boxer in the military, so I had uncles who were always around fitness. And so fitness was something that was part of my household, it was part of my upbringing. And like any young kid, I had my heroes. And so I would always model myself after these uncles with these big bulging muscles and uh, this, this. Which you have. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my thing was to really chase them. And, I, and, and in doing that, I developed a, a, a knack for the business. I developed a passion over time and it's, uh, it's my heart. It, it is what I am. It's, so Yep Fitness, that is the place to be. So tell me, what got you involved in Yep Fitness? What you got you starting Yep Fitness? Okay, Yep, well, fitness for me, I've been all over the country doing fitness. I've worked with every major health club you can think of in this city and abroad. Okay. And so for me, uh, as I learned on the road, I learned uh, the, the management of health clubs and I learned how to really get into the inner workings of, a, of the systems. That was key for me because once I married my uh, fitness knowledge and background with that, the back end, uh, I was able to, to bring a model to the city that we feel like is uh, probably the most progressive uh, and attractive model. Um, it was really about bringing fitness to communities that are, in our opinion, underserved when it comes to health and fitness. And so that was a key piece for me. But it had to be a quality health center, and it had to be affordable as well. So that's why you chose Roseland. That's why we chose the Roseland area, which is centrally located to the city. And uh, we put a quality health and fitness center there for as low as 10 bucks a month. So what's the difference between Yep Fitness, Planet Fitness, LA Fitness? What's the difference? You know, I, I don't make it a habit of, of uh, throwing stones at anybody or, or even trying to draw too many comparisons. I feel like if you're at a, a health club okay. and you're getting results, the big deal is the result. 
Uh, people have for, for many years have been buying the air, as we like to call it. So you come in, you're wowed by the ambiance, you love the pool, you love this, you love these things. At the end of the day, if you're not getting results, then you're not happy. It doesn't matter if it's Jep or if it's any of the guys that you named. We have to focus on results. And so what we wanted to do is uh, bring fitness back to a more organic approach okay. where it was really about an intimate sit down, get your weight analysis, get your body fat analysis, get your circumference measurements, talk about your goals, talk about the battle between the brain and the biology and really get people on the right track to, 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 to realize their fitness goals. Okay, so I don't know if you're like me, I have a problem with food. I love food. I love carbs, I love cheese, I love breads. For people like me, how would you work on their diet? Look, because I know that's a big part of fitness. You have to maintain a healthy diet. Here's the thing when it comes to food. You know, you'll hear people throw uh, statistics out there all the time and they'll say, Diet and nutrition is 70 to 80 percent of the battle. Right. Here's a statistic they don't throw out as often. 80 percent of people who diet fail. <laughs> and so, so we, have to, we have to be able to really have a real conversation about this stuff and talk about why it is that we can lose weight, we can see massive results by practicing good nutrition, by doing certain things, but it doesn't stick. Okay. The result has to last. And so it, the first thing is to make it a lifestyle change. It can't be about a fad diet. It can't be about an express workout that gets it done in 15 minutes or less. It really has to be something that you adopt as a lifestyle. And it's not about just dieting, but it's about eating right. It's about structure. It's about schedule. It's about timing. And so all of these pieces come into play. So how often do we need to exercise? Now, see, I come to you three times a week okay. or whenever I get up. Okay. <laughs> how often do people who are trying to lose the weight need to exercise. You want the CDC or the Centers for Disease Control or you want my answer? I want your answer, because your I'm, answer I, is always right. The, CD, the CDC, uh, Centers for Disease Control states that for just two to three times a week okay. is good for weight maintenance. If you have to lose a lot of weight, you want to increase it to probably three to four days a week okay. uh, with a mixture of cardiovascular exercise and strength training. The strength training is just as important as the dieting and the cardiovascular exercise. Strength training will add lean muscle tissue to the body, which will cause us to go into what we call thermogenesis. We experience thermogenesis, where your body will burn more consistently even when you're not working. Uh, I recommend a three day minimum. Right. Get in there three days of uh, minimum. And this is because partly because it'll help you get the results. But then it needs to become habit forming. Okay. We're going to work this into a lifestyle. So uh, you got to make the time for it. Which is also my problem again, making time to go work out as well. I love to work out, but we also want to let people know where is Yep Fitness? How can they get involved? How much it costs? Okay. Let us know. Great questions. Uh, we're located at 7617 Reading Road in the Valley Shopping Center, uh, the same lot as Buddy Rose's Pizzas and the YMCA Children's Center. Okay. Uh, we, our hours of operation are 5 a.m. to midnight, Monday through Thursday, uh, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Fridays, and then 8.30 to 7 p.m on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. Uh, you can look us up on uh, uh, Facebook, you can uh, like us on Facebook and check us out on Twitter. Uh, we have a blog site. Uh, we give out free information all the time about fitness and plan of action and helping people get direction. So, uh, or you can go to www.yepfitness.com and I'm sure you guys will have we'll it on your you site. We'll give you a link on WLWT as well and give us a telephone number to get a hold of you. Sure, 513-761-9371 or 513-761-YEP1. Go ahead and give us those one more time just for everybody on the radio. 513 761 9371. You heard it from his mouth already. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more on the community calendar events. Thank you so Thank much, you. Kurt, for coming. Thank you. It was Andrew. nice Thank having you. you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. We'll see you soon.
Okay, I'm motivated. Let's all get in shape. All right, here's India Jones again with some community calendar events. We're going to start off this calendar, excuse me, calendar event segment with the Centennial Police Association's Awards Banquet and Scholarship Dance is Saturday, January 18th at 6 p.m. at the Kingsgate Marriott Ballroom. Now, for more information, you call 513-651-3507. Next, we have the Cincinnati Herald's Daddy-Daughter Dinner Dance. This is Saturday, February 1st at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. as well at the Holiday Inn in Sharonville. For more information, call 513-916-3331, extension 10. Last but not least, we have Celebrate Black History, an African-American spiritual journey. This is Saturday, February 1st at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is at the UC Blue Ash at the Munt Center. This is the college campus. The address is 9555 Plainfield Road. The tickets are $20. For more information, call 513-351-1530. And that's all we have for the calendar segment. <laughs> Thank you, India. Oh, the Cincinnati Herald's phone number is 513-961-3331. We want you to have a great week. Stay safe and stay positive.